So w what is blood? Well, blood is um, the tissue. It's a tissue that connects and it's in form of fluid. So you could term it as a connective tissue that is in form of fluid. There are three main functions, though not limited to these. Life, growth, health. In terms of life, we're talking about its function to carry uh, gases such as oxygen from the lungs to the tissue uh, for use and also to pick up the carbon dioxide from the tissue to the lungs for release. Uh, with growth, we're talking about its ability to carry uh, nutrients uh, from the GIT and also hormones from the endocrine system to all the tissues, connective. And with health, we're talking about its ability to protect the body and also get rid of uh, its waste products and uh, that's true organs such as the kidneys and also when you talk about its ability to um, protect we're talking about um, cells within the blood that have the ability to do so now in order for us to continue appreciating what blood is we could look at some of its properties so um, I always ask my students at the beginning of my blood lectures to say what color is blood and uh, there's a chorus that it is red okay so here's he here's a thought line basically we know that there is uh, a particular substance within blood that when mixed with water if you can remember when mixed with oxygen rather if you can remember from your pre-med uh, tends reddish brown and so that's the color you see of blood because at any given point that you view blood you're viewing it whilst it's mixed with oxygen <laughs> what if we had to take that aspect out uh, so I always tell my um, students to look at their wrists and to see what color they see. And you know, people will say bluish green. And so I'm always starting off my lectures telling them that if it wasn't for the oxygen, you would see your blood as green. And so, <laughs> but really, blood is red. And the next property that you would appreciate is how much blood is found within um, uh, a system. So we look at five liters as the average and the pH is about 7.4, slightly alkaline. Uh, when we talk of viscosity, uh, it is more viscous than water is, uh, mainly due to the red blood cells and, and the plasma proteins. And in talking about plasma proteins and, 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 and red blood cells as we are appreciating what blood is, we could also look at the fact that because of these aspects, it, it has a specific gravity of 1.05 to, to about 1.061 um, and plasma has a 1.022 uh, to 1.026. Uh, speaking of plasma, apart from the blood cells that are red blood cells, which are the erythrocytes, white blood cells, leukocytes, and platelets and thrombocytes, uh, we find that we can actually press those down due to the gravity that we've just talked about uh, using uh, spinning. And once these are packed down uh, as packed cell volume, we see the top of it 
uh, forming a substance which makes about 55% of the blood that you would, you, you would um, have spun as a whole. And um, this blood is less dense as we have already seen in, in, in what I was just alluding to uh, as specific gravity. And this component of blood is known as plasma. So it's without uh, formed elements. It's a component of blood that has um, no formed elements. And a, a few weeks ago, we were calculating these as uh, compartments. And so I'll allow you 30 seconds with whoever you're sitting next to or just by yourself to go back to um, the calculation of uh, this particular component of fluid in the body. Go ahead. All right. So if we look at the other component of packed uh, cell volume, we have uh, leukocytes and platelets uh, that are after the plasma. And the most heavy component is the 45% of whole blood um, is hematocrit and this is the most dense uh, which is the red blood cells and so in between we find white blood cells and and platelets and then at the bottom we find the red blood cells uh, so this is to appreciate components of um, the uh, blood I'll take uh, five seconds for you to just uh, catch up with me. All right, so what we have here is um, a picture of what we could call uh, what we saw earlier, and we have plasma and blood, but Whilst plasma is this straw colored clear liquid part of blood uh, and contains water as well as solids, uh, which are organic and inorganic, we have a secondary component called serum. Now, serum is plasma without fibrinogens. Now, fibrinogens we're going to look at later uh, an aspect of uh, clotting an aspect that is involved in clotting so when, when you remove uh, that part you have serum instead of plasma but if you do uh, the spinning with uh, fibrinogens in there what you have on top is plasma okay now uh, this slide further exemplifies what the functions of plasma are uh, before we delve into blood itself though we will come back to it um, so we're talking about mainly coagulation and we would we will not the steps the steps rather that are involved in coagulation it also has some immune substances as well as um, uh, proteins that are responsible for transportation and also it is uh, very very vital in uh, maintenance of osmotic uh, pressure as we have plasma proteins that are too large to pass through the capillary uh, membrane and so they remain in the blood where they exert this oncotic pressure and ensure that there is not much water that is being released from the blood into the tissue uh, it also regulates the balance uh, of acid in the blood. Um, having said that, 
now we just want to look at the question where does blood come from so basically um, in the adult many of the red blood cells as well as platelets and white blood cells are formed in the bone marrow uh, whilst in the fetus uh, blood cells are formed in the liver and the spleen as well um, so we have components of the marrow that are known as active cellular marrow that uh, are there to ensure that these processes occur whilst the inactive marrow um, uh, is yellow in color and uh, does not necessarily participate in this and so in order for us to appreciate uh, the genesis of these cells we should uh, appreciate uh, some of the terms now if you're looking at the uh, screen right now I want us to appreciate a few a few things uh, first of all uh, totipotent, totipotent uh, cells have the ability to differentiate into any type of cells and um, you can call these stem cells so what we have there is a, a blood stem cell that has the ability to differentiate into any type of cell uh, uh, that it, it can and we have them differentiate in uh, the bone marrow into uh, cells that can make uh, red blood cells and ce uh, cells that have the ability to make white blood cells and uh, platelets um, whilst the fetus of course this also occurs in the spleens and and the liver um, whilst this is happening we see that the these uh, now myeloid uh, stem cells or lymphoid stem cells have a more committed line in what they're going to become uh, are they going to become red blood cells are they going to become white blood cells and and, and so on and so forth and so um, these then differentiate into what we call uh, blast cells or precursor cells and uh, these precursor cells so we can call these um, myeloid stem cells or lymphoid stem cells as progenitor cells and then they form what are known as precursor cells and the precursor cells of course have got a higher commitment to what they're going to um, uh, become and so having ended on the precursors for each of these components we're going to be taking up from precursor until what they really form and so we're going to start with uh, the red blood cells okay so red blood cells are produced in the, uh, the bone red bone marrow uh, through the process of erythropoiesis and they uh, have a lifespan of about 120 and their function is uh, not only transport of, gla of, of gas uh, but also um, blood typing and buffering and so on and so forth and they uh, have different uh, amounts in men and women having lower levels in women of about 4.8 million per microliter and in men of about 5.4 uh, million per micro um, liter though here we've given uh, an average count of 5.5 um, they have a diameter of about 7.2 and we have that as our, uh, our range but normally they are disc like and uh, they have sort of a dumbbell shape and the center is thinner than the periphery So as I said earlier, 
they have the, for, uh, the function of transport of oxygen uh, from the lungs to the tissue as well as transport of carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs. In terms of oxygen, we see that the hemoglobin that is in red blood cell is, is able to combine with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin and this is how transport occurs. Uh, while this same hemoglobin can actually combine with carbon dioxide to form uh, the carb hemoglobin and hence facilitate uh, the process of uh, transportation. Um, in the function of buffering in blood, we see that uh, the hemoglobin has um, an ability to regulate uh, proteins and their concentration playing a role in the maintenance of this acid-base balance. Uh, it also has uh, a role in blood group determination because the red blood cells themselves carry this group of antigens uh, on them like A antigen, B antigen and NIRH factor uh, which helps determine what blood group uh, you are and this helps to in, uh, prevent reactions due to incompatibility when doing blood diffusion. And if I could just round the back up uh, to um, hemoglobin and, and, and what it does in, in red blood cells. This is um, an ion containing coloring matter of red blood cells which I earlier referred to when I was talking about the green and the red. Uh, the content is about 14 to 16 uh, grams in a uh, deciliter and uh, in erythroblasts uh, we see that there's this pyrrhine that is manufactured in red blood cells and it combines to form a, a protoprofirin in order to um, to have it connect uh, to have it connect 